Today we're speaking to Paul Connick, the District Attorney for Jefferson Parish. Paul, it's so nice to have you with us. Oh, Paul, nice to be with. here. Nice to be here. So this is National Crime Victims Week, and we right. obviously are highlighting the wonderful services that our partners offer for victims of crime. In Jefferson Parish's program, your program, your, um, your witness assistance staff have done an amazing job. So can you tell us a little bit about the services that y'all are providing for crime victims? Well, as a DA, you know, our focus is on victims. It has to be, you know, when I, when I think about it, and, and I like to express it this way, if you're involved in a case, a civil case, you get to choose your lawyer. You get to, you know, you can pick one off a billboard or you can, you know, go to the, the phone book. But in, in the case of, in a criminal case, we're the lawyer for victims. We are the Lord. They have to come to us. So it's important, and we always preach to our people that we have to treat victims as a client, in a sense. You know, we have to be um, focus on them and make sure that they are comfortable in the system. And we have an entire division dedicated and staffed by assistant coordinators, uh, victim witness coordinators, whose job is to just do that: focus, focus on um, victims and witnesses. We are involved in the case uh, as soon as it comes to us. They are involved in the case in many, in many instances, even before. Before the case gets to us from the sheriff's office, our people are uh, involved, contacting witnesses and, and victims uh, to let them know that we are there, we are here for them. Uh, they explain the system. They support the witnesses and victims throughout the entire process. Uh, for well, most victims and most witnesses, they are, this is the first time they're exposed to the criminal justice system. It is a daunting, daunting, um, you know, endeavor, for, for lack of a better word. So it's important for us to make them feel as comfortable as possible. It's important for us to explain um, the system, every step of the system, and be with them to answer questions every step of the way, even, even past and beyond, uh, even into the appellate process. So that's our focus. You know, we address their critical needs and we provide um, some services. But the most important thing is that uh, we make sure that they're treated with the dignity and respect that they deserve. So. Um, that's incredibly important. I can tell you, um, Paul, as a victim of a crime that occurred in Jefferson Parish years ago and going through that process, your people were just amazing as, as the sheriff's um, detectives that worked with us. And the point that you mentioned that is that it's not just this little brief encounter. It's this long journey that you take with your staff, with the sheriff's staff. Um, incredibly important. And I felt like y'all held our hand or held my hand the entire time. Right, so right. thank you, first off. Um, well, but, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Important. I'm happy to hear that because our people are trained. Nancy Michelle does a great job in directing that entire division. And we emphasis tra we emphasize training you know, and, um, and things of that nature to make sure that we know what we're doing. You know? mm -hmm. And genuinely, you have to care for these, for these people who have been victimized. And I think our people do. And I'm grateful for that. You know, I think they do. And I think that the available resources are amazing. Um, is there one or two specific things that you'd like to highlight to make sure that people understand that they can come to you for this assistance? You know, every case is important, whether felony or misdemeanor, some are more serious than others, but every victim has to be treated with the same um, standard. And we, um, because in their mind, it's a traumatic event. You know, yes. it may not be as serious as, maybe it's not a murder case, maybe it's a burglary, maybe it's a carjacking, but in their world, it's been turned upside down because of this incident. So we, we strive and we do treat every case and every victim, regardless of, of the the level, the same. Victims are all treated the same across the board. And when you ask the most important services that our Victims' Rights Division provides, I think every one of them is important in its own, its own way. For instance, in domestic violence and stalking cases are treated differently from a human trafficking case. So in domestic violence and stalking cases, we refer them to Metro or to the Family Justice Center, which provides a safe haven. Human trafficking is Covenant House, which does an excellent job, and the Eden House, and that is also a provide safe haven for these victims. The 
in sexual assault cases, we refer them to STAR, which is a sexual trauma awareness and response. And they provide counseling, not, not necessarily a safe haven, but it's different from what every, every crime and every victim is treated differently. So we, it's not just one cookie cutter, you know, every, every one size fits all type thing. Um, and then there's Catholic Charities, which is, which they provide services that we legally can't provide. For instance, um, clothing, food, paying utilities for the, um, for the um, victims. Who, and we refer every day to Catholic Charities. So they're, they're another resource. So those four highlight, I think, some of the main um, areas, of the services that we provide. But you can also, and this is what I wanted to get across, Every, if you come in as uh, as a human trafficking case or a victim of human trafficking, we're, we're going to send you to the place that's designed to deal with that trauma. So, it's customized. It it needs to be. Yeah, and it, it's um, and it's more effective in in the um, it's 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 better for the victim. So um, the bottom line here and the message that I'd I'd like to end with with you know your conversation is that there's hope. There is resources there, and there is a commitment that never stopped. I mean, COVID's oh, no. here, but it's never stopped. Right, and without you know, what I would say along those lines is, you know, we're going to be here. You know, victims and, and the citizens of Jefferson Parish have to know that that we're we're going to be here. Uh, uh, we haven't stopped since the virus. We do a lot of uh, remote, you know, now and uh, through technology. We haven't missed a beat. It's been it's surprised me in the sense that we were able to get up and running so quickly. But our team is on the job and we're doing our duty to protect the citizens of Jefferson Parish, you know, and, and we're working diligently and we'll continue to. So there's hope in that. Even the, in these uncertain times, that's important to know that we're going to get through this together. And the DA's office is there doing its job to ensure that the citizens of Jefferson Parish remain safe. Well, I know we don't consider ourselves first responders, but you all, your office is absolutely a first responder because y'all are going to touch people in their most tragic time. And um, right. again, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for, um, for the parish um, as a whole, for the protection that y'all provide. And we appreciate you spending time with us today on this interview. Thank you, Hopefully. darling. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye.